you guys. I think we are good. I think we're just getting started. As always, we'll do a quick check to make sure everything's okay, everything looks okay, everything sounds okay. Uh, we'll get started very soon. I'm going to try to organize my space here on the computer a little bit. Um, I hope you're all doing well. <laughs> Hi guys! Again, as always, there's usually like a 15 second delay um, between, you know, uh, you guys, what we see, what you see, what I'm doing, so a little bit of a delay. Hello! I'm really excited. Today we're going to talk about how I mix skin tones. Um, I mentioned this, oh I'm so glad you guys are here. I mentioned this a little bit um, in the community post that I put up just really recently. Let me know if everything sounds good. Everything's amazing. Yay! Yeah, okay, so I mentioned this a little bit in um, the community post, but I'm going to be doing live streams all month this month instead of regular videos because I'm working on another project that hopefully I'll be able to talk to you guys about soon, but I want to give some time to that, so um, doing casual live streams like this is a good way for me to talk with you guys, and oh my goodness, so many people talking. Oh, thank you for the super chat. Nad art, kinda. Oh, thank you. That's so kind. Um, okay, hold on just a moment. Oh my. Wow, you guys are all talking so fast. Okay. Yeah, I do. I do need a mod. Somebody asked if I needed a mod. I'll make sure, because we're going to be doing this all month. So in the future, I will make sure that we have uh, either a virtual mod, or I really want to get my husband to do it for me. He often sometimes t uh, tunes into the stream, so maybe he'll help me out with that. Okay. Thank you guys for being here. I promise that these streams will get more professional as we go. So a quick talk about the stickers I have on my palette. You may recognize some of them if you know some of these artists. Um, these little pixel terrariums are by, are by Illustrena, um, who's Reina, Reina Bell. I think she changed her YouTube name to Reina Bell, which is her name. She's amazing. Uh, this is Miriam Tilson. This is Audra Claire. These two adorable Animal Crossing stickers are by... Uh, um, Rebecca, is her last name Crossing? Really? The Animal Crossing Rebecca? Anyway, her name is Rebecca, and she has, um, at, she, we're friends on Instagram, and I purchased these stickers from her. This is from Dory Why Not, who is also amazing, and, um, I will make sure I put, um, links to all of the artists. When the stream is over, I will make sure that everybody's li um, listed in there. Okay. We're going to go ahead and get started. Oh, I need to grab my iPad so I can share reference images with you guys because um, we are going to be painting and drawing from reference again today. Let me get my iPad. I'm a little bit um, unprepared today. Normally I would make the references available to you guys so you could download them or have them ready if you wanted to paint along with me, but we're not going to be doing like quite the same as last time. So I really just want to show you guys how I mix skin tones today. So um, yeah, I'm excited. All right. Let me pull up my references. We're going to be looking at two different skin tone types, a, a, a super light uh, or relatively lighter skin tone and then a darker skin tone. So there's lots of things in between and on either side of all of these various skin tones, but I want to talk to you guys about how I mix um, things in a kind of broader range. So we'll start with the lighter skin tone because it's something that I'm more familiar with. And then afterwards we will move on to the darker skin tone. And as soon as I can find the reference, it wasn't that far down, was it? Oh, I know. Um, the sketchbook is the Strathmore watercolor journal. I think this is like the 400 series. It's not my favorite for watercolors. Ooh, that's very bright. Hold on, let me. 
Anyway, um, it's not my favorite for watercolors. It's fine for swatching, uh, but I do like it for... I hope that's not too bright. I do love it for gouache, actually. It's nice. And swatching is good, but for actual paintings, it's not ideal. So anyway, um, these gouache mushrooms are going to be August patreon sticker sheet so if you signed up over on patreon before august 1st and you were charged at the beginning of the month these are the stickers that you that you'll be getting over on patreon i do new sticker sheets there every month so we're going to swatch over here anyway let me pull up those reference images and we'll get started i'm so glad you guys are here um, if you have any specific questions while we work if you can tag me in your comments so at arlie bean that is so much easier for me to see so um yeah, okay, let me pull up my references. I'm so glad to be hanging out with you guys. I have been really tired lately, actually. So tired. Ooh, is it kind of dark? Okay, I'll lighten it up. Thank you for letting me know. Um, somebody asked if I ever get stressed that a, a sketchbook has to be super aesthetic. Not really, because I... I, I just don't have very aesthetic sketchbook pages and um, it's I think it's because I don't share sketchbook pages very often um, let me make sure it's in focus okay it should be in focus now so I try not to um, do that a digital art stream Jess asks if you guys would be interested in a digital art stream, I might be able to do something like that. I think it would be easier to stream digital art because I can just share um, programs on the computer and things like that. So if you guys are interested, I don't do digital art a ton, but that could be fun. Okay. Let me know how it looks. Should be good. Okay. So I've got my White Knights paints here. It's my go-to palette, uh, the 36 color set. So we're going to go with that. What's your favorite brand for calligraphy brushes? I don't really have a favorite brand for calligraphy brushes. I usually get mine in sets, um, but I do really like Blue Heron Arts. Uh, it's a family-owned company. You can get their stuff online. Oh, I just dropped a lot of stuff on the floor. Uh, you can get their products online, and the, the owner of the company, Henry Lee, and his wife, they have a YouTube channel, and they're super sweet people. I like them a lot. So blueheronarts.com, they have nice calligraphy brushes, and they're always super responsive. Like if you, have an, um, if you have an issue with an order or anything like that, they always get back to you like super quickly. They're very nice people. Okay, I'm going to try to show you as much as I can. It's going to be difficult to show you the reference and the swatches and my paints at the same time, but I will do my very best. Aww. What shirt are you wearing? Chase, thank you for asking about my shirt. This is uh, a Dragon Age themed shirt um, that I got on Red Redbubble. The artist is Kara McGee. Um, she's so great. Um, this is Solus from Dragon Age, of course. And um, Kara makes tea blends, and this, this art is actually on a tea blend. Um, yeah. Yes, the stream will be uploaded as a video later. You can always watch the streams after. Um, I don't have a ton of experience with White Knight's pastel colors. Thank you for asking. Porcupine Pancake asks how my family's doing. All right, it's a bit, everything, everybody's just a bit drained and tired, you know, um, with everything going on, but we're good. We're safe and we're happy to be together, so. Alright, so anyway, this is the reference image we're looking at. It looks a little yellow for you guys. It's not actually that yellow. So, okay, I'm going to zoom in on just the face so we can look. I'm sorry, that looks like crazy yellow. So anyway, pretend it's less yellow. <laughs> um, for lighter skin tones, I usually start with a redder base. Um, yeah, <laughs> this little shirt, I love this shirt. Have I tried using oxgall? I've used synthetic ox synthetic oxgall when making paints. Um, I haven't used authentic oxgall at all, or especially adding it to pre-made watercolors. I don't have any experiment experience. Thank you, Maya. Maya says that they love my glasses. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to talk about skin tones for a little while. So if I don't get to your questions, um, yes, I will post links to as much stuff as I can afterwards. All right. So 
we are going to start with the lighter skin tones. I do have a sketch, by the way, we're going to paint, but I want to swatch first. Um, so with my white night sets, my go-to base color is the cadmium red light. So if I start with that as a base, I can almost just use that right as it is. Um, with lighter skin tones, the key is going to be like transparency, like allowing the white of the paper to show through. So the cadmium red light, if you mix it with a bit of the Naples yellow, um, this might, I don't know if this is their Naples yellow, if they have more than one Naples yellow, if White Knights does, but these two colors mixed together I always really like. I find having two reds to sometimes even be more valuable than having like two yellows because when you have a cooler red you can also mix um, more like uh, dustier blushy colors which I find to be very very helpful and super valuable. So what I want to do first is show you the range of colors I'm going to be focusing on for this one and then we will go in and actually do a quick paint portrait painting. Do I mentally plan out a portrait? A little bit. We'll talk about that when we get to the sketching phase. Also, I want to apologize if any of my colors don't look exactly the same on for me as they will on your screen. There's always a little bit of variation, you know. So for this painting, I'm going to limit myself to three colors. And we'll go ahead and use my favorite trio of White Knight's colors. I'd like to do a limited palette video about this trio because they are my favorite. You can tell because they're the pans that I've emptied the most in this set. So, yeah, the cadmium red light appears to granulate a little bit. Um, I think it's just the, it's a little bit heavier, the pigments are a little bit denser, so they tend to soak into especially cold pressed paper like this and give a little bit of texture. It's really interesting. I will look into slow mode, thank you for asking. Okay, and then the other color, just to show you, this is their White Knight's Indigo, I believe. So the color on its own looks like this. Um, but I love mixing with this color. So when we use all three of these, let's do some quick swatches of each color. Hopefully my that was really dirty. <laughs> that doesn't count. This Naples yellow, it gets so dirty. Yeah, that's still dirty. <laughs> We're professionals here, you guys. Oh, kind of blurry? Okay, it should be in focus now. It's focused on the paper. And that cadmium red light. So our three colors here. Yeah, it's a really pretty color. So how I like to actually mix this indigo, um, if I take it into some of the mix I already have, for my yellow and red, it gets it desaturates so quickly. And then we've got like a dusty purplish color. If I wanted a tone that was a little bit more green, by mixing it with that Naples yellow, it just, the indigo keeps the saturation low, which is actually really nice. Um, so I'm easily able to desaturate colors. And if I just mix that into, that greenish mix I just did, into more of the cadmium red, we get a really dusty desaturated brown color. So by keeping the saturation low, I'm able to branch out more with um, using a bunch of different colors. So I can have hints of green and hints of purple and, and lots of a wide variety of colors because the saturation's low. And when you're working with a li large variety of colors, it's better to have a focal color. So one color that you allow to be more saturated than everything else and then just tone down the rest. And that helps the palette to be way more cohesive. So what I'm doing here is I just want to show you an idea of the range of colors I'm going to be working with. So we're keeping our, sa our saturation a little bit lower, and if I was going to have pops of color at all, you know what, I'm going to take out this cooler red too because I know I'm going to be using it. So I may have like pops of this color here. The cadmium red light is a warmer red, so if I then swatch a cooler red just for comparison next to it, you can see how that's a bit pinker, it strays a little bit closer to purple. This looks a little golden, and I think part of it's just because the swatch is dirty. So, um, where is my little card? 
it's so crazy to think but this swatch right here let me show you so the colors I'm focusing on specifically are the Naples yellow is here and then the cadmium red light is here on the end and then the cooler red I'm using is here and that indigo is here. It has phthalo blue in it so it gets like these nice green undertones as opposed to like a Payne's gray. So this is like more neutral and this has some bluer green undertones. So I'm going to be focusing on these four colors. I don't always mix with just these four but this is this is my favorite to be honest this is my favorite limited palette. Yeah, I do believe, I think you're right. This one, the PR170, um, sorry, it's kind of out of focus. This is Ruby, I believe. I think that's right. Thank you, um, Katerina. So you can mix, and even when I go into my darker skin tones for the second portrait example, we'll do another little um, example sheet like this, and that one, I might change up the palette a little bit because I like to paint darker skin tones with a slightly different palette. Um, uh, this stream will probably be about an hour long. Okay? Alright. So now we've got some rough sketches, some desaturated colors. If I want a pop of anything, like a more saturated color, it's probably going to be um, red. Group colors into warm tones and cool tones and which saturates which. Hmm, so just like like some color theory talk about warm cone warm colors versus cool colors that would be nice thank you for the idea okay let's move into our painting I have a small portrait done do, 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 do. Do, do, do. Oh, oh that was a mistake why did I do that <laughs> I'll probably put these back in the pan to actually paint with them back in the palette. Oh, you guys are so nice. All right, I'm gonna move the sketchbook and bring out my sketch so we can talk about how we're gonna do this painting. I have a small five by seven sketch here of our reference image. Again, not perfect likeness, that's usually not my goal, but happy with it. Um, So, as a quick look, we're gonna we'll back out a little bit to start. Oh my. We've got a reference and we've got Oh, if you're if you're not using Naples yellow, I also like um lemon yellow will work well and yellow ochre. Kind of like those two together work really nicely. Um mostly just staying away from like a, a primary yellow like a why do I feel like this is in the wrong spot I hope I'm not just like messing up the order of my paints right now um, staying away from like a primary yellow like this is going to help to keep your colors a little bit more desaturated right because yeah Naples yellow doesn't come in like the standard color set this is customized here do I often just stick with a few colors yes I do it's very helpful I can still get a wide range, but it helps to keep things a bit more cohesive. I have this bigger, these two brush, I'll leave a link to this set, I really like these. Um, I'm going to stick to the smaller one because we have a smaller portrait today. Do I keep the face symmetrical? Pretty much never. Pretty much never. I think that nobody's face is really symmetrical. I think it would be, I feel, I feel like paintings look too stale when the faces are just symmetrical. Yes, I am mate, wearing a shirt with Kara McGee's art on it. I love Kara McGee. She's fantastic. I, I, yeah, I think her art is amazing. All right, I'm going to clean this well. I'll probably be working in just this well. Um, yeah. A little bit of green mixed in with skin tones, like a little bit of green mixed in with red helps to desaturate. If you can balance it out, you can do a little bit. I know I will be. Um, you're going to see most of my mixing is going to happen in this well right here. I'm going to try to move my water so that that's not in shadow as much. 
I have too much stuff on my table right now. Too much stuff. It's okay, Sophie. Sophie says you're late. Um, that, but that's okay. We're just getting started with painting. We just did a little bit of swatching. So now I'm going to try to keep this reference handy so you guys can see it as we work. Again, it looks way more yellow to you guys than it does to me. So, um, okay. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to start by focusing on the pinker tones, like I said. And for this one, I'm going to start with a cooler red. And then... Like just as an example, well, and I'm gonna stick with my Naples yellow. So by this is like my favorite mix is like a red with Naples yellow. Um, it gets the color dusty and just a little bit warm. So I'm gonna start here, and I'm gonna place this. Yeah, it is pretty yellowy. So weird, huh? Um, the sketchbook I was using is the Strathmore Watercolor Journal. I believe it's the 400 series. Not my favorite sketchbook for watercolors, but it's good for swatching, and I like it for gouache. Okay, so I'm gonna take this like dusty color and place it in areas where I see a lot of red, but not necessarily in areas where I want it to be super warm. So um, the inside corners of the eyes, around the bridge of the nose. I'm gonna start um, laying in color pretty messily because I like to do that. And then it helps to keep me from being like a perfectionist, like right out of the gate, you know? So I'm just gonna play around the outside of the eyes. The lips, I want to be pretty warm, but the upper lip is generally a little bit cooler than the lower lip. So, um, I'm gonna do that. And then after I lay down like, like my first few lines of color, I take a wet clean brush and smear out some of my edges. Some of them I'll leave a little sharp. I think it adds nice texture, but just kind of blend things out a little bit and reinforce bits of color where I want it. Like in areas that are a little bit darker. So it's super, super light right now, right? Super light. Uh, Jackie asks, how do I paint teeth? Um, by, by basically not painting teeth. If you try to go too detailed with teeth, um, it's not gonna look right. Um, an important thing to keep in mind is this entire area is dark. Even though this character, this, this figure's mouth is slightly open, you can see the teeth, but it's really dark in there. If you squint your eyes, you can like not really even see the teeth. So making these white and then paint, painting black around the teeth isn't gonna look right. It all has to be in shadow, and then maybe the tiniest little indications of the lines between the teeth. Um, but remember that things are fuzzier when they're in shadows. And if you make, the more detailed you make something, the more of a focal point it becomes. So you have to be really careful. Okay. So for mixing um, sort of like a, a base skin tone, I'm going to use a little bit of everything here. So I'm going to have a little bit of, my cadmium red is going to be the primary color. This color I could use as it is right now, um, but it would be very peachy, very warm. I'm going to add a little bit of, just a tiny, tiny bit of uh, the indigo to neutralize this color. And it doesn't look like I did much, but this color is now not as orange and it's slightly more neutral. And I'm gonna place this warm color in a lot of areas as a base. So knocking back the white of the paper is super important. Um, so I'm doing a couple things here. I am dispelling my fear for perfection, like the need I have for things to be perfect, by using large strokes, knocking back the white of the paper so that I can better establish values as I work. And I'm just loosening up and kind of getting myself in the right mental state. So I'm thinking about values a lot right now. So the areas that are darker, the areas that are lighter. I'm going to add a little bit more of our cooler red and put this color under the chin. Now I want all of this neck, like I want all of the neck to be darker because I want to draw focus to the face. So I want my the great the areas of greatest contrast to be the focal points. So if I want the eyes to be the focus, for example, um, that's where I'm gonna wanna have the most contrast. I'm gonna try to make it a goal also to use, never use a color in just one spot. So if I'm placing a color, like the color I put under the neck here, I want to put it somewhere else as well, and that helps to keep the color palette more cohesive, um, so everything just works together a bit more. I love how you guys are talking to each other and asking questions and answering each other's questions. 
It makes me happy. Um, another thing that could be really helpful to do at this point is to get in dark values. So you might think you want to work from light to dark, and that could be good, but sometimes you need to get darker values in early so you can see um, how you need to balance it out. So I'm mixing something really warm here to put on the bottom lip, because the bottom lip points up more than the top lip, so it's going to catch more light. So generally that color can be a bit warmer while the top lip points down a little bit more so it can be in shadow. Do you always do a sketch first? Yes, when I'm working with watercolors I do. Not always with, gua um, with gouache, sometimes with gouache I will um, sketch right with my paint first, like do a loose ske sketch with my paint. So another place I like to add this warmer red, again, I don't want to have that color in just one place, is the inside of the ears, because we've got some light that bounces around in there. And also, um, actually on the white of the eye, I think that adding a warm red to the white of the eye just adds a lot more emotion to the paintings. <laughs> yeah, I was. I really wanted to just talk through my process with you guys here. I thought that that would be really helpful. So now I want to get rid of the white of the background, and I want to put in some darker tones for the hair so I can balance out. And you're gonna. This is gonna come together really quickly. Um, you are not the only one who struggles, Dee Dee, with the Sakura Koi watercolors. I think that if you're just starting to learn, like, how do watercolors work? You know, how do I water down color? How do I do that? I think that the Sakura Koi can be helpful. But then once you start to develop a bit more skill, I think they can get in your way a lot. Um, and it can be difficult because they are a bit grainy and chalky. Alright, I'm going to knock down the background. So what I want for the background is a neutral color. A mid-tone neutral color. That's kind of what we got here. I know it looks really yellow. I like the idea of something a little bit more purple like this. So I want it to be a little bit cooler than um, than our portrait, so we can really focus on the warmth, you know, by contrast. So the portrait will seem warmer, and the background will seem a bit cooler. So this is just a mix of my three colors. The cadmium red light, the naples yellow, and that indigo all mixed together to get something like a neutral gray. And I'm just going to knock out the background. I don't always do the background in one solid color. It's more of like a graphic, bold, like sort of illustrative move to do it like that instead of adding different variations. But for this experiment, we're just going to try one solid color in the background like that. So now, isn't that crazy how just a couple seconds makes such a big difference for um, the face pops out more, we can see more of that face because the background is no longer white. Pretty cool, huh? So now I want to get a color in for the hair. Um, this model has brown hair. So I could pull a brown from my palette, but it would be more effective for me to mix a custom color. And I want the color of the hair to be warmer than the color of the background. Ooh, this is interesting. And I am kind of playing it by ear a little bit, because I don't know exactly what I'm going to get. So I still want the saturation to be relatively low. Well, I mean, compared to, like, the face. So we've got something a little bit more brown and darker than the background now. Oh yeah, if you guys are having issues with somebody uh, with spamming or anything like that, just let me know. We can put people in timeout. But thank you, I mean, Red Rodriguez, thank you for the hearts and things, but yeah, we gotta give everybody space to talk. So I've been using the same brush this whole time, and I want to do that until I start to feel cramped with a brush that's too large. So I don't want to skip to a smaller brush too soon. That's another way that I can um, get too focused on the details right away. Oh, I'm so glad you like this style. I know that the live streams generally don't, like, aren't viewed as much as a regular video, you know, because you can't jump around and uh, it's just a different format, which I understand, but it's nice to hang out and hopefully this information will always be there so you can come back to it if you want to see something, anything. I'm going to water out this edge here, so it's going to make the head a little bit fuzzy, not as stark of a contrast between 
the uh, where the head ends and the the background begins. I like that. Yeah, when I do hair, I, I usually try to do it as blocky as possible. Jumping into the details with hair right away is just not a good way to start. So now I am going to switch to a smaller brush because I want to do eyebrows. So let me bring you guys in a little bit closer so we could talk about eyebrows and how I like to paint them. And we'll lighten this up a little. Okay. So when painting eyebrows, I like to... Um, start uh, the darkest value of the eyebrow is going to be right in here at the inside corner and I usually try to do some like wispier hairs and then let that resolve itself into a thicker block I actually need to mix a new color that's a bit deeper and darker here yeah I want the darkest part of the eyebrow to be right here at this this inner corner And then I'll let that fade out to something lighter out this way as maybe the hairs become more sparse or we just want more of a folk more of a focus on this inside these little wispy hairs are so hard for me but I like to to try and do them so we'll do that and then blend that out towards the outside super just like super light not that big of a deal okay so now, I think that this is a point where we could easily let ourselves panic at this point in the painting. Because like we've got a good base here, but it's not super detailed, of course. But now, it's, it's, most of the work is done at this point. It's just a matter of bringing out the details. So I'm going to put, a, put some, really, now, now all we need is just contrast. So I'm going to add some darker values, pops of red, um, in places where I want a little bit more saturation. So the inside corner of the mouth. And just subtly uh, shifting the temperature of the color. Like sometimes I might want it to be a little bit warmer. Sometimes I want that color to be a little bit cooler. Yes, the live stream will be available after the stream. I'm happy that you guys want to see it. And then try to get maybe some a little bit of detail in around the lips. Nothing too crazy. Lips are a thing that I need to just spend some time studying because I I'm okay with how I do them, but I think that I could be doing a lot better. And because I usually keep them pretty simple anyway. But okay, so something really simple to start like that. And I'm just kind of pulling mixes from the colors I already have here, and I want to get the shadow under the lip and then we'll drop in the shadow under the chin here so right now we're just like sculpting you know what I mean we've got the big blob of our head head blob <laughs> and now we're gonna start sculpting in some of the finer details because you know if, you, if this was a lump of clay you could maybe say now that it's vaguely head shaped um, but you can't see many of the details so like our job at this point now is going to be to pull out those details so I'm going to be shifting between a warmer red value and a cooler red for the nose. Um, cooler towards the bottom as the um, no cur nose curves away from the light and then lighter up top as it catches more light. So we'll get that a bit warmer. I want to have warmth around the eyes and then let that fade out onto the cheek because I don't actually want this cheek value to be completely white. All right, so um, what I'm going to be doing is, let me make sure this is in focus again. I want to focus on the eyes now, because once we have our focal point in, we can see what else we need to do just to make it done. Yeah, we got to define that head blob. Okay, so to work on the eyes, I have to get a dark value in for the pupils. I think I, I really want to play with this indigo. I like it a lot, but I don't necessarily want the eyes to be blue. So I'm going to desaturate with my cadmium red light and maybe add a bit more of a cooler tone to it as we go. Oh, Ava, thank you so much for the super chat. That's so nice. Does temperature matter once you have the value down? Uh, Flower Child asks. Um, value, I think, is always the most important. Um, 
but second to that is definitely temperature like value is going to show you what you're looking at but temperature is going to tell you how to feel about what you're looking at so i feel like value does a lot for establishing form and then temperature does a lot for establishing mood and atmosphere and like a setting for your painting if that makes sense so what I'm doing now is just laying in a value I put the darker stuff up top and then I'm watering that out towards the bottom of the eye letting that get lighter softening out that harsh value and like we've already got like a, a lot of an eye there super quick um, it's just a matter of manipulating our paint and our values. Again, I, I said this before, but the white of the eye is not really white. So uh, leaving that like a stark white can sometimes make you go, oh man, how come my eye doesn't look right? My face doesn't look right when you're drawing and painting. I'm going to mix a warm color for this deep shadow here under the brow and lay that in like this. And this is where we're going to start to see the form come together. This is exciting. And then some depth there. So already we can see this eye so much more than we could like a minute ago. Super nice. And all of this paint is kind of wet right now. So everything kind of blends and bleeds a little bit, which is something I really like. Um, I do want to reinforce this brow shape a little more. Yeah, so look at that. We've like not panicking when the color's running because it looks like it's running a lot, but it's not. And as long as you've got your details in, the form is still going to be there. Like it looks like it's going all over the place, but it's actually going to lend itself to a painting that looks nice when it's done. <clears throat> the paper, oh yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't even mention the paper I'm using now is the Fabriano Artistico Hot Press paper. I have it on a small pad, um, so that is what I'm using now. I'm going to go ahead and mix up a color for the other eye, which is mostly the same color as we used for the first eye. So I'm focusing on the pupil being dark. I'm trying to leave out spaces for the highlights instead of, you know, I know I could go back in with gouache, but it's fun when you can get them in right away so you can like see that contrast right away. That's fun. <clears throat> yeah, so I want to keep this one pretty short because we're, we're mostly focusing on skin tones right now. And I want to ta have some time to talk to you guys about darker skin tones too. So mostly, you know, the basis for when I do light skin tones is often red. Um, you want to keep your palette, it's still relatively limited. You know, we've got lots of dusty, purpley brown values. And um, working with a limited palette is super helpful for keeping your painting cohesive, even if you add lots of different colors. As this this side of the face I want to be a little bit more in shadow just a little yeah the oh yeah you guys are talking about gouache I see that how do you like this paper um I have it I don't have a ton of experience with the Fabriano paper um but overall I think it's pretty nice like especially for a hot press paper it has I feel like the paint soaks in a little bit more um, than some other hot press papers I've used. So it definitely does feel different. But I like it. It works for the way I want to paint, you know, which is pretty loose, not super detail heavy. But it's, it's hard to say how it, how it would work for somebody else depending on how you paint but it's definitely a good quality paper. Like I can feel that. I'm just kind of trying to measure my contrast now. So looking at areas where I've let things get dark and comparing that to other areas and saying, do I want this to be darker? Um, is my focal point standing out enough? You know, all that stuff. I like to add a lot of like just large red shapes to the ears. I feel like it blocks in those shapes so nicely. 
Ooh, water to color ratios. I know that that can be difficult to control. Um, yeah, I think more water, or I shouldn't say, you don't want your brush to be very wet. There's a difference between the wetness of the brush and how much water is mixed into your paint. Um, I usually start with more water and less paint, so like a more diluted color to start, and then build on that. And as you want your color to get more saturated, you can, you know, add a bit more paint to your water. Right now I'm just trying to give the lips a little tiny bit of dimension. I like how warm they are. Oh, that, that's green. Okay, that's green. I just grabbed it from like a random spot on the palette and it was green. Right now I want to get a darker color, not too dark because if, if I add too much contrast to this area now it's going to be distracting. So right now I want to just get some darkness inside the mouth here to ground that shape a little better. There. Alright, let's back up and look at this portrait from further away. Because to be honest, as an example, this one might be just about done now. Okay, so let's back up a little. So I know I could add more to this. I know I could add, uh, part of me, I'm like itching to um, like make the hair darker or the background darker because I feel like the, the shapes, really it's not the hair or the background, what really it needs is just for the edges of the face to feel more defined, you know? Um, just for the, the structure of the head to feel a bit more apparent. So I'm going to add a bit more depth and I'm working way more saturated. So I usually start less saturated and then up the saturation as I go. So this seems way too, like way too much right now, and it is, but I'm just now taking in a wet clean brush to smear out or like blend out those edges. So I need a watercolor paper to be able to do this basically, to be able to blend out my edges. Um, if a paint absorbs, if a paper absorbs the paint too quickly, I'm going to have a hard time with it. There's also, I want, trying to go back to being bold here, this entire side to be a bit more in shadow to better define that form. It was all very light. That's fun. This is fun. Alright. I think I'm going to set this one aside for now. We might come back and add... Oh my. There's a large vehicle going down the street. Making lots of noise. Alright, I want to talk about darker skin tones soon, so I'm just trying to get in a little more. I'm thinking mostly about value and then shifts in temperature, so places where I want it to be a little bit warmer or a little bit cooler. Okay, and using what's on my palette too, because if I use what's already on my palette, it's going to keep things way more cohesive than if I'm trying to like make it mix a new color every time. And then just for fun, one more thing. <laughs> I'm going to make this neck area darker to push this back a little more. So, okay, there we go. Just push the whole neck back. Okay, good, nice. So super simple. <laughs> All right. So this is what we've got. Let's take a... I need to close these windows. Okay. I don't know what's going on on the street. Going on on the street. Hopefully that's better. Let's take a close look and then we'll move on to our second example. Yeah, I definitely can push the values a bit more. Maybe we'll come back to it. Um, I could definitely... Like one thing, I'm, I'm actually itching to do it right now. Maybe I will. The crease of the eyelid has kind of disappeared. And that's definitely something that I could bring in. So I know I want a cooler red, but I want it to be a bit more desaturated, so I'm mixing in other colors. Let's see, how wet is that? Maybe not too wet. Okay. So I'm gonna 
bring back my eyelid crease. And this is still wet, so it's going to kind of blend into the other areas. And this is one thing, like when you start pushing the values, it's good to start with the areas you know you want to be dark because that darkness does kind of flow into just the, the shape of the eye socket. So yeah, even that's a little bit better. And this is, my brain just wants to fiddle with everything because now I go, oh, the shape under the eyes, you can't see that very much, you need more of that. <laughs> And then, oh, the crease of the eye. And it's just, you keep seeing one thing after another, you know? That's like, oh, that's not dark enough. Or, oh, that could use a little bit more contrast. Okay. All right, I'm gonna stop this one here. And it can be loose. Isn't it crazy? Yeah, little bits of things make such a difference. So if you ever feel like you're lost in a painting, just assess if your values are too light and if there's a spot where you can add more contrast um, to bring those features back. That can sometimes be really helpful. Okay. So that is going to be it for our first example. This is still really wet. We might come back to it and do some more, but I'm really happy with this. And you guys have been here hanging out with me the whole time, so you've seen this did not take a very long time to complete. Um, we did all of our swatching and everything. is like 45 minutes so far. So uh, this is our first painting all done. My favorite tea, oh, that's so hard. I love black teas. I just remembered I have a whole mug of tea here I haven't been drinking. Um, I love black teas, especially in the morning. It's just so nice, and it helps me to kind of wake up without feeling super jittery. Um, okay, so here's that one. Let's look at our second example. Okay, so for this one, we're going to be focusing on darker skin tones. This one is an interesting reference. So the face is cropped in a really weird way when I sketched it. I will adjust the values. Give me just a second. The face is cropped in a really weird way, and um, bring it down to like there. So it's even kind of hard to see in the sketch. So we've got the back of the head here, the front of the head here, one eye and the ear, and like the corners of the mouth and thing like things like that. Um, I've been getting tea from adagio.com and they have amazing loose leaf teas. I love their loose leaf teas. They have just so much. I've been getting so much. This tea is from Etsy, or this mug is from Etsy. Somebody on Etsy who makes mugs. I love this one. It's so nice. Oh yeah, two examples, because we did a lighter skin tone, but we got to do a darker one too. Um, that's a question I get pretty frequently is how, how you can apply more colorful skin tones to darker skin tones. So um, I want to talk about that with you guys. And I also want to share with you guys a method that I've been using uh, more often for painting portraits. So we're going way darker for this one. And this is the reference image that I have. I think you guys can see the colors a little bit truer here. Kind of. It's not perfect. But this is the reference that we're using. So. It's scary. I know, it's so dark. It's so difficult to like figure out how am I going to do this, but don't worry. We're going to be using the same sort of approach, and um, it's going to be fun. So, okay, this is the reference we're using. As you can see, I've got it cropped in. I wanted to focus on this one eye and kind of give it a little bit of a different look. So, I'm going to... Uh, because we're doing a new painting, I'm going to clean out this well. I know I could use this paint. Oh, it's, I'm so tempted, but it's okay. There's a lot of pigments in there. So we're gonna make a clean, a clean mix. Oh, that's almost the color I want anyway, but it's okay. So when painting darker skin tones, should we do some swatches first to talk about it? I know, I love this model. He's, he's absolutely gorgeous. Okay, real quick. Let's talk about the plan here. We're gonna go back to our swatching. I'm just gonna lay everything on top of everything else. Um, and we're gonna talk about the plan for colors. Let me know if that's too bright. I think it's okay. Um, so, the, the there's a, this, this dusty purple background to this image. I know you guys are seeing something a little bit warmer. Uh, 
excuse me, but I love that dusty purple and I want to play with it. So I'm starting with a dusty red and then adding some of my indigo to get a color close. And if it's not quite there, look, I can add a little bit more red. We're basically there now. So this color, oh, that's so nice. Um, I want to start with a base of a color like this, maybe with a little bit more red. So I want to start with a dusty base and then we're going to build our tones out of it. Um, I think this is really helpful especially for painting darker skin tones because the face overall is darker um, but there's still so much variety in tone, richness, and value. There's still a lot we can do. So this is a method that I think is really helpful. So we are going to be playing with t tones like this and I'm probably going to incorporate one brown, a middle brown, maybe this one, to help me get the skin tones that I want a little bit more easily. So um, this brown is a really nice medium brown, hopefully you can see it here, but I want to keep it cool for the sake of this portrait. So I want a medium brown so that I can go either way, but when I mix my colors for the portrait, I'm going to be adding in, I'm going to be keeping it like purpley. So the colors that we're actually going to be mixing are going to look pretty purple and then I'll be desaturating with that brown. Anyway, I'm just giving you guys an idea of the kind of tones we're going to be mixing for this. I love, for doing darker skin tones, I love purple and brown and blue together. So nice. Oh my goodness. So nice. All right. So we're going with something darker something a bit more purple, a bit more blue, and brown for this one. Okay, that's the plan. 400 people here. Um, thank you guys so much for coming to check out the stream. Okay, time to paint some darker skin tones. I'm excited. Okay, we should be in focus. My plan was originally to have the reference image up on the screen for you guys, and that would have been so much better for like truer colors. I want to keep this nearby so you guys can see what I'm working on. I can zoom out a little more. There we go. Okay, so for the larger picture, we're going to back out. If you guys have any other questions, let me know. I'm so happy that you guys are just chatting with each other. If it's too bright, let me know. Alright, so what I'm going to do, of course I've got this base color here that isn't quite what I wanted, um, but I can lighten it with water and warm it up a little bit. Okay, so what I'm going to be doing now is covering the entire surface of my paper with this base color and we're going to sculpt in a very, a much more specific way and then I'm looking for highlights that I might want to leave white. With this though, to be honest, I'm thinking about knocking everything back except for this is going to seem scary, but don't worry. Except for maybe the, like the ridge of the eye, depending on where I want the focal point to be. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to just put a wash over the whole area, except for, let's carve that out now, here. And I want that cheekbone to be looking way up at the light, so we'll do there. And everything else is going to get filled in. Um, if I wanted to get a really smooth wash here, I would be tilting my paper and working from top to bottom. Other than that, I'm just trying to get, keep my brush wet to make sure that I can fill in all the area. If your mixture is too dry, that can um, make your paint like the streaks show and then you won't get as flat of a wash. Okay. But I don't need it to be perfect and it'll actually help me if there's a little bit of texture. So we've got almost all of the white knocked back now. I'm going to soften this edge of the cheekbone right here because there's actually a curvature to the cheekbone and I want that edge to be soft instead of super hard. Okay, this is what we have. Look, our first layer is down. Now, I can either work, woo, make a mess. I can either work in this while it's uh, wet, like while this paper is wet, I can work into it, or I can, you guys are so nice, look at you guys just like talking to each other, oh, that makes me happy, okay, 
All right, so I can either work in this while it's wet, but I then I I risk disrupting the paint under nice underneath. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dry this. It's gonna make some noise. I'm sorry. Um, I, I say this every time. I have an embossing tool here. It's a heat tool. I'm gonna use this to dry my paper. So give me a moment while this makes some noise. Okay. Aw, oh, thank you for the super chat, US Frame. <laughs> I see 108, 108 colors and I immediately think of Holbein. Are we talking about Holbein watercolors? Okay. Aw, oh, every time I see a super chat, it just warms my heart. Thank you guys so much. I'm honored to even have um, the capability to include, to like have super chats available. It, it feels like such an honor. Okay, we're gonna move back to our slightly larger brush and we're gonna work kind of in the same way. Oh, what tape are you using? This is the Pro Art um, masking tape. I actually don't think you can get this anymore. I'm so sad. I think it maybe, maybe has been discontinued. Um, like, it's this is the brand, Pro Art. It looks like this. I've been trying to get more, but I think I might have to try to get a new type of masking tape. Um, We'll see. Yeah, hold on. Okay, so now I'm gonna go in with darker areas and I wanna start bold here because we, we have the opportunity because we have some darker values. And I wanna think about areas that I know I'm gonna wanna keep lighter now and go from there. Okay, so areas that I know in this reference I want to be lighter. I want to have some lightness around the outside edge of the eye here and also in the ear, actually. There's some warmer, richer tones in the ear. But we're gonna start with darker tones. So I'm mixing, one thing I, this is, I love this, about the indigo with the cadmium red light. Because that cadmium red light is so warm, um, it neutralizes the indigo without just making a purple. So this, this color, just these two, um, the, the heat gun I'm using is by, it says Nicole is the brand, but I don't think you can get this one, this specific brand anymore. Of course, when I update links in the description, I'll make sure there's a link to a comparable heat tool. They're less than $20. It works better than a blow dryer for drying paints because it doesn't smear your paint around. Like, it doesn't blow it. It's more heat than actual, like, air, so. Alright, here we go. So we've got like a purpley, a desaturated purpley mix, and I'm gonna focus on the areas that I know are dark. So, like around the ear. I wanna kinda carve out the shape of the ear too. And what's gonna happen is I'm going to let this shape bleed forward. So the hair is gonna be dark. I want the hair to be dark. I'm gonna go with like, you know what, I'm gonna add some texture now. Cause I could just, um, let that be a straight line for now, but I want to go ahead and add texture now, because then we, I don't know, we might leave it like that. So this is going to be, Pro Art tape is still available on Amazon, good, maybe it was just out of stock for a while. So anyway, dark, 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 dark up here. This is actually, it could be darker for the hair, and I want all the hair to be dark, and it kind of sets the border for a painting, which is nice. And then I'm also going to put that same dark tone around the bottom of the ear. So we're just framing up the ear, framing up the head, and going outside the lines, apparently. So we're starting dark. And then as it lightens, I want to warm it. So I'm going to add a little bit more red. But again, to keep the skin tone a little bit more natural looking, I'm going to be adding brown as well. So red and brown to warm up the color as it gets lighter. So we've got lots of warmth down there. Ah, I love that. Purple and brown go together so nicely. Here, I actually need to tilt this so I can see it and out of the light better. So lots more brown. 
and a bit of red to keep the color warm. But I have to remember that this is all still pretty dark. Oh, Rachel, thank you so much for the super chat. That's so nice of you. Okay, so working in big strokes still, keeping it broad. This tone could even be darker, like it, it's, it's still sitting pretty light. And I'm thinking about areas that are going to be not as light as the white of our paper, but that I still want to be a little bit lighter. So like I'm leaving this section of the forehead out. This this process, I'm covering a lot more area because I did that flat wash over top. It really is more of a straightforward light to dark situation. So I'm starting with that lighter color and then building in my darker colors as we go. Um, I want to keep a soft curve here near the cheekbone instead of like hard shadow lines. And then I'm going to let the color get cool again as we get to the bottom. This is going to look like a blob for now and that's okay. As we get to the bottom of the, the head down there. Okay. <laughs> Alright. I want to look at the ear a little bit. And I want the ear to be much warmer. So we've got lots of purpley colors, purples and reds and browns in the in most of the skin tones, but for the ear there's a lot of warmth and I want to show the contrast there. So we can still have a lot of variety in temperature. And I also want to drop some of that warmth around the eye, because again, if you're using a color it's good to use it in more than just one place. So um, when you're working in and you're trying to figure out where, you know, where do I want a hard shadow? Where do I want a softer shadow? Um, yeah, head blob, head blob number two. Um, a harder shadow is going to denote, like a harder line rather, is going to denote like a cast shadow. So a spot where light is obstructing your subject. So like if my hand was over top of this other hand, there's a harder shadow between my two hands. but right here where my hand curves, like there's more light on this side, less light on this side, there's still a shadow here, but this line is really soft because we're talking about curvature instead of cast shadows. So in areas where there's a curve, like the cheekbone here or the forehead, and it's curving away from the light, keeping that shadow softer is going to really reinforce the um, overall form. But for example, here under the ear, where the ear meets the neck, that's a cast shadow. So I want there to be a harder line, like a more distinct difference between the ear and the neck. So we can see like this is a different form, you know? Yep, this is good, this is good. One thing I'm trying to be really careful of uh, working on this particular portrait is my paper is very wet and because I'm covering so much of the paper at a time I have to be careful not to work in areas that are too wet unless I want my edges to bleed out more. We need some more red in this ear. So I've got lots of purple in here but the red is going to introduce warmth So do that. I'm, I can feel that if I try to do too much to this ear, it's just too wet right now. So I'm not going to do too much. Oh, thank you, Jim. Okay, so I know my eye, I want to work on the eye and then build out the darkness from there. Um, this is actually frustrating me. This is like too dark right here. That's okay. Once we get the eye in, it'll balance. I'm actually going to real quick just to put a little more up here reinforce that dark area okay so you're starting to see little bits of the form but it's still very blobby at this point I want to move in to work on I gotta get out of this wet area because I'm just gonna make it worse not worse but like I'm gonna push paint around instead of giving it time to dry and start to make sense we're gonna go into the eye area and 
the reference photo, the eye area is really dark. Let me see if I can show this to you guys. So if you can see here, I'm going to try to show this to you as best I can. The eye area is very dark. The shadow of the pupil and the eye all blends together into one big shadow shape. From the eye, the eyelid, the eye socket, the eyebrow under the eye, we have one really big shadow shape. And it can be scary to paint all of those together, but so important. So um, we're going to do that. We're going to make this all one big shadow shape. And before we do that, I want to make sure my paper is dry because you can see how this is kind of feathering out because my paper was wet when I did that. So let me know if that's too bright. Let me dry this off a little. So I'm not a super detail-oriented person, um, and it's sometimes difficult for me to maintain white areas. Like I've placed in my white areas here, but it's so easy for me to like go over them. <laughs> uh, no, Charles, I will not delete this later. It'll be up. Hold on, I need something. Let me just bring it. This is where I keep all my brushes <laughs> in this container, and I'm hunting for a specific brush right now. Ah, here it is. This is my little my little detail brush. See? Brush, brush, brush. Okay. Uh, have I tried Sennelier watercolors? Yes, I have a very large set of Sennelier. I have the box set of like 98 colors. Um, of Sennelier's and I haven't used them like super recently but yeah the watercolors again I'm using my white knight watercolors today but I should get my Sennelier watercolors out soon all right so now we are going to mix a deep color I want to bring you guys in close close we go. Hopefully that's not too bright. No shaking, please. Um, somebody asked about masking fluid recommendations. I don't use masking fluid very often. I always have so much trouble with it, so I tend to just stay away from it. But if anybody else has any recommendations, please do let us know. Um, it's not really the cost of the Sennelier watercolors. I've just been enjoying my White Knights watercolors so much. I need to get the Sennelier ones out again. I'll do that soon. I do. They're beautiful paints. Um, I just haven't used them super often. All right. So now we're going to go in and work in the dark shape of the eye, and then we're going to, and then you'll be able to see how light everything else is in comparison. And the paper that I'm using, because somebody asked, is the Fabriano. Artistico watercolor paper. This is the 100% cotton hot press paper. Okay, let's get in our dark values here. This is when this is going to start to look like a, a face. We'll be able to better see what we're looking at. I'm going to do one big shadow shape for the eye and that shadow in continues down into like the crease of the eye here so it comes out from like that and then I'm gonna let that go all the way up into the eyebrow one big shadow shape and then bring that down under the eye as well and then let it fade out when we get out here. 
really it should get warmer too. So what I can do is if I want that to fade out to something warmer is add a bit of brown into the mix we already made and then apply that brown color to the edges that I want to be lighter. Trying really hard not to cover up the white that I already put in. Okay. I want to completely like kind of case in this eye though. And so again, the primary difference when when I'm doing lighter skin tones or darker skin tones, I, I don't when I do lighter skin tones, I tend to use almost no brown. But I really embrace brown when I'm painting darker skin tones because it mixes so beautifully with other colors I like to use for darker skin tones like purple and blue. Um, see what I'm doing now, I really shouldn't be using such a tiny brush. <laughs> So the basics of our eye are in there. I actually don't want there to be such a strong highlight here. I was planning to kind of fade that out a bit like that. Yeah, because we, we don't have a super strong highlight in the actual pupil of the eye. And as you can see, I'm just kind of mixing, oh, well, you can't see actually. I'm mixing in between colors on my palette to get the the values from one place to the next. So I'm just doing subtle shifts of hue. Um, so we've got our eye shape coming along slowly. I want to bring contrast into it, but I have to be careful because my paper's wet. Um, so I have to know that whatever I'm gonna do is gonna bleed. So we'll get the darker eyebrow back in there. If I can follow this line of the crease of the eye, we can make that darker. I have to be really careful about pushing around wet paint right now, but that's better. Someone asked about Asian skin tones. Whew. With Asian skin tones, it, it depends. It really does depend. There's so much variety. You know what I mean? Like if you're painting someone from Japan versus someone from like Thailand, it, it varies so much. It can fall really in between um, what we've done so far. Like there's just so much room in between these. Um, it depends. I think it depends not so much on just the the ethnicity of the person that you're painting, but also just the overall atmosphere that you want for the whole painting, you know? Um, like I started with this dusty background that went over basically the entire piece, you know? And it was more of, you know, what kind of atmosphere do I want the entire painting to have when it's done? And then building character into the skin tones from there. All right, let's see. We've got our eye. I might go in and make it a little bit darker later on, but See, like right now, I'm just going to mix this entire well together and go, these colors are all in here. Like I just um, mixed the whole well in. And I'm like, I'm just going to use this. This is fine. And just kind of reinforce the, that darker value. I can make it warmer. So I'm just like shifting the color I already have, you know, to, ha to help it make sense for the, for the painting. And then if I feel like my reference photo is kind of nondescript, by which I mean there's a lot of darkness, a lot of darker values, and you can't always see exactly what's happening, I can choose to change that fact about my reference or just embrace it and let that be something that my painting will also have. So I don't have to, it doesn't have to be super de detailed if I don't want it to. Oh, Danielle, thank you for the super chat, Danielle. <gasps> That's so nice. What would you do if a painting isn't going anywhere or it's turning out bad? I think there's so many reasons why paintings turn out bad. Um, maybe the painting isn't actually turning out bad and you're just not sure what to do next. You know, um, I think there's so much variation. If a painting is actually not going well, if I know that I've made a mistake, like I was working on the sketch and I did something I shouldn't have, or I never, the sketch wasn't good from the beginning, then there's no point in like trying to push through that 
and make it into something that it's never going to be. And it's okay to just stop and start over. Like, it doesn't have to be a failure. It can be a learning experience. Um, how do I choose mood? There's a variety. Sometimes it's based on the reference I'm using. You know, like, sometimes I'll see, like, that the in this reference, that dusty purple color and go, man, I really want to paint with that, you know. Um, sometimes it's the lighting, if it feels very dramatic or soft and airy and delicate. Um, it, it just, it varies so much on, on the mood. And it depends on how heavily I'm relying on my reference images too, you know. I know that's a very vague answer, but it really does defend, depend the mood of a painting. I often tend to... Um, gravitate more towards like melancholy emotional atmospheres for my paintings which I, I love I like things that make you happy because they make you sad <laughs> is that silly like something makes me feel a little bit sad and just like um, spurs those emotions in me that makes me happy not that I like to be sad but to, have, to go on the emotional journey I enjoy. So right now I'm mixing a color, I'm not doing a very good job, I'm trying to mix a color for the lips um, because I do want that anchor point down here. Yeah the white night paints are so reliable and they don't move very much, like there's some watercolors that spread a lot when you put them down and um, the white nights is not one of those so it just I, they stay where I put them and when that's what I want I'm so grateful for it. So right now I've kind of lost the sketch of the lips but I really want to put them in. So in order to find out where oh Sophie has to do some schoolwork, it's okay Sophie you can come back and watch the video later if you want to. Thank you for coming by. Um, I appreciate you guys being here. Alright so to find out where I actually want the lips to be because this whole shape is really big down here. I'm gonna measure and when I look at my reference, the corner of the mouth is a little bit lower than the bottom of the earlobe, which follows a curve up to that. So I'm going to kind of put that a little bit lower, actually, than where I had my sketch. It doesn't need to be super perfect. This is more of an anchoring point than an actual detail on the painting. Because I want, this is going to be like the upper lip here, like that. I also have to think about how far back it comes in relation to the eye. So on my reference image, um, we can kind of do a, a line and find the angle from the inside corner of the eye to the outside edge of the lip. And I can see I've actually brought mine out a little too far. I'm constant, and then look, it's wet. I can just push it with my finger. <laughs> so yeah, I'm constantly measuring, trying to get things right. And again, I'm going to make the bottom lip a little bit warmer because it points up and catches more light. Dark shadow underneath. It's almost like I put cool, like cooler temperatures on either side of that bottom lip so that the warmth pops out a bit more. I have to be really careful about the nostril because the nostril would technically fall like right around here. But if I make that area too dark, I'm drawing focus away from the eyes, which isn't really what I want. Antonia says, I'm doing it with the tab of your, oh, live stream open. Not very recommended, but I just can't stop watching. Ah, thank you. Yeah, the White Knight set, so reliable, so friendly. I love it. All right, so two simple things I think that this painting needs to be done is more contrast in our focal area, which is the eye. And it just needs to be grounded a little bit more. So I need to um, darken this area, the hair you can see, which is where we put in our first dark area, which now looks so much lighter because we have so many other values around. So I'm going to let this be a little bit more blue and as it lays on top of this, um, then I'm just adding some random little bits of texture for the hair, like that. Again, this is going to be one where I could push the values a lot more than I'm going to, because I'm not going for like 
hyper realism here. I want to capture my focal point. I want to say what I is most important to say with the painting, and then I want to um, be done with it and move on, you know. So I'm going to see what I can get for under the, again, I want to darken, push back the area under the chin. Favorite book? Ooh, that's a tough, I was going to say that's a tough one, but I don't actually know if that's true. Hold on, I need to see where the neck ends because I think I have it a little bit too thick. Okay, hold on. I will answer your book question in one moment as soon as I establish this. I actually think I want the neck to end at the around the inside corner of the eye. So we'll play with, that looks too skinny for how I did this. Anyway, we'll play with that and see what that looks like. Again, not going for super, yeah, that needs to be thicker. Not going for super heavy detail here. Really even, I'm just, I want the shape to be a blur. I don't want it to be super descript. There's a face there. There's a head in here somewhere, okay? Somewhere in there, there's a face. Favorite book? Um, if we were going based on the book I've read the most times, it would have to be Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. Classic. Uh, I love that. I'm a, Again, I'm a sap for like uh, romance and love stories that make you sad. That makes me happy. Um, I love Jane Eyre. Of course, then that get, takes you into things like Pride and Prejudice, which I also love. Um, if it was written by Jane Austen or a Bronte sister, I could probably appreciate it. Adding just a bit of red, bit of warmth around the eye. And then I know I'm going to want to go in with a darker value. Not super crazy too dark. It's because I don't want it to stand out too much against the values I've already taken the time to put in. But it's just going to kind of reaffirm this that big dark shadow shape that we made. Yeah, that's better. And then let that shadow come up and connect. Not bad, right? Hmm. This is getting actually a little messy. Some of my layers, this paper like is kind of like done with me layering on it. It's like, please, I can't, I don't want any more, no more layering. Leave me alone. It's getting a little worn out with me. So I probably won't get too much more out of this paper for layering. That's okay, we're just about done for today. It is very long, Pride and Prejudice. It's a lot to get through. Ah, oh, Wuthering, Wuthering Heights hurts my heart. Ugh. Which means I love it. It's so different. Okay, let's back out so we can assess. Yeah, I don't quite love this paper either. I agree. Not my favorite hot press paper, but it's okay. Um, it's okay. We can see what we wanted to see here, what we wanted to paint. Let me dry this a little and we will assess. This isn't completely dry yet, but <laughs> yeah, I'm almost done. All right, so what's going to really pull this together is making sure our anchor points are in place so that our darkest areas are as dark as we want them to be, you know? Um, usually I like to have a darker area and my lightest area close to each other as far as like for making a focal point. So I've still got some white around this eye that I didn't completely obliterate. And I want to make sure 
that our contrast is there. I have to be really careful now because I can very easily, my paper is already kind of mad at me for almost overworking it. So I'm trying to push my values without, um, you know, too much enduring the wrath of my paper. And then just going to get a little bit more warmth around the eye. It's so crazy because like this can make me feel like, okay, wait, now I need to go over everything again because what have I done? It's okay. I'm going to ground it with another darker area being the outline of this ear, the hair shape. I just messed that up. That's okay. Pushing in a bit more darkness back here, laying a little bit more of that blue in. Something like that. And then I like the curve of the head. Okay. Super simple. Well. Okay. And curve out the bottom of the ear again. Something like that. Alright. So we carved. Uh, we carved a bit. Doesn't have to be super heavy detailed. You know, like this, there are some areas that are um, basically just going to stay blobs. Um, and that's what I want. Doesn't have to be super focused everywhere. I think it's more effective if we don't do that. I've been limiting my saturation a lot more lately. I used to, my rainbow skin used to be more rainbowy. Okay, I really don't want to overwork this thing. Oh, this is so hard. I want to just like s knock all of this back. Okay. We've got a nice space here. Okay. A nice experiment. A fun experiment. Lots of blobbiness, but I'm happy with it. Okay, let's look at what we did today. How long have we been streaming? About an hour and a half. Okay, so these are the two little portraits that we made today. They're different. I feel like the style even varies because we blocked in the colors so much differently. So we've got, this one is so much more tame, I think. Um, just so much gentler, you know? This is what we made today with our two references. So we've got our darker skin tones, our lighter skin tones, both of them pretty red. Ooh, Detroit Become Human. I've watched playthroughs of that game but never played it myself. I feel like once you watch playthroughs, like, you know, I don't need to like play it as much myself. And I think that's a good one for watching how other people play it. Yeah, so this is what we made. I love video games. Don't even get me started on video games. The only thing I want to do right now is go play video games. <laughs> um, anyway, we made two portraits, two different portraits. We have desaturated backgrounds, like desaturated lighter tone backgrounds on both that knock the white back so that we can focus our lightest values on where we want them to be. Um, more brown over here. The browns, and also used a pre-made brown, like a, the, the PBR7 was the pigment that was the brown. And then over here, any brownish tones that we used, we mixed ourselves. And the result of which is that you can see bits of the cadmium red poking through where it doesn't always mix perfectly with, um, with everything else. So I'm really happy with how these turned out. I hope you guys like them too. They were very fun. Um, yeah, this has been super fun. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. I am going to go. If you have any other questions about this process or about what we have done, please do um, leave a comment on this video when it's up. After it's done processing, it'll just be available on the channel. You can come back and watch it however you would like. Thank you guys for joining me for another stream. I should probably look at you when I talk. Thank you for joining me for another stream. It was super fun and educational. And I will hang out with you guys next week again. Ooh, we're going to be talking about something different next week. I'm excited. Um, so, 
I hope you guys are doing well. Thank you for hanging out with me, and I will talk to you later. Have a great weekend, everybody. Goodbye. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. Goodbye. You guys are great. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye-bye. <laughs>